A classic hit. A classic. I wanted to derail that right into a Johnny Denver country roads like yeah. a South Jersey bad boys. It was that, is that John Denver? The country roads, the beginning, just a little. Uh, yeah, that sounded nuts. <laughs> <like it. laughs> just something a little. Wait, uh, sing country roads. Um, how does that begin? Uh, so you didn't even know how it began. That's why your melody was all yeah, off. Yeah, well, I don't think you know the song. The very beginning. Country roads. The very beginning, not the oh. not the chorus. Almost heaven. West Virginia. Blue Ridge, Ridge Mountain, Mountain Chattanooga River. Yeah, see, we could take that into Pocono Mountains, Delaware River. I mean, there's some potential there. Oh yeah, yeah, Car- uh, yeah. And our voices, I uh, are getting better each episode. I feel like they are. It's a shame that nobody wants to join in when we have them on the pod with the theme song because yeah. it's like. But I'll tell you what, a couple fans that are friends of the show <laughs> have said. Uh, that they'll be at home and they'll just randomly hit a South Jersey man, boys. <laughs> like they'll just hit it as they're doing the dishes or something. Yeah, so, you know the people. It's are, catching yeah, on. It's catching on. Yeah, if, if we just, if you just keep doing it, by the time we get to like episode two seventy three, yep. it's really gonna. This is probably it's I think, really gonna be crisp. Fifty eight something. It's orgasmic. If I could, you know, describe it in one it. word. Um, that's usually how some people have it. Uh, I've had pe- multiple people at your wedding come up to me and just do it in my ear. It was. Uh, <laughs> It's quite a. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. You're the, like, excuse me, Brendan. Your grandma keeps whispering <laughs> "South Jersey bad boy" yeah, in my ear. Kept coming up to me. She's like, "South Jersey bad boy." Yeah. You're like, listen. <laughs> I, I can't avoid going somewhere in the general South Jersey area without somebody knowing you and knowing me v- through you. Yeah. I mean, anywhere at the tap room, other places. I went up to, uh, we did a, a show at Dooney's in Del Ran, oh, yeah. all the way up in Burlington County. And these two girls that were there probably had to be 20 years old. I think they just graduated high school. So, like, <laughs> I don't know them. <laughs> I mean, I sure did, but it's been a while since prom. So. Don't put that. <laughs> Yeah, since uh, since 2022's prom. <laughs> yeah, so they they came up to me and Paulie Cars after the show and were talking our fucking ears off. But they came up to me first, and then Paul kind of was just standing there, and I was just like, yeah, I was like, you you get it, Paul. And yeah. He was after they left. He came up to me and he's like, I thought they were coming up to you and asking if they if you knew Brendan Donkin. <laughs> <laughs> Every time at the tap room, that's what yeah. it is. Uh, fucking in security at the airport. That yep. one uh, coworker of yours as yeah. well. Uh, we're south jersey famous dude yeah we're, we're building out this south jersey fan base and a lot of people said that we couldn't do it um that you just you the can't haters tried to stop us they said you, there's no such thing as south jersey famous there's no celebrities in south jersey you and know here we are and here we are top of our game yep. top of our peak physical performance i would say yeah yeah i've been i've been getting there uh, I'm, no one's <laughs> yeah. ever worn a julius irving uh t-shirt jersey with tits on it before but i'll tell you what i could slap the net on a basket if we go out to a court right now oh dude i i don't i don't know if the people understand how hard you slap net yeah yeah i mean when i go up sometimes it goes through the the hoop that's and it it gets tangled at the top and then i need to ask an african-american fellow to get it down for me but usually, usually when you do that it means you're fucking you're getting there yeah just, just like our fame here in South Jersey. Yeah, the fame is building, dude. The people are talking. They're mm-hmm. seeing the reels. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a couple people from work say that we've come up on their Explore page, and I've been like, oh boy, that's yikes. A, that's a problem. That's an issue. <laughs> Please do not report us to HR. Yeah. We're right. going to be, I'm going to get called into an HR meeting at a company I don't work at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, sir, did you say something about going to prom with high school aged girls? <laughs> it doesn't sound like me. No. And then they just play it back. It's like, yeah. well, at the timestamp of thirty six twenty seven here on episode episodes twenty through forty five, you make a mention of it every single one. Yeah, almost <laughs> every episode you're mentioning some somebody else's prom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just really like the color uh, schemes at Cherokees. They got an orange and, and brown in there. Yeah. Um, uh, Collingswood even has a nice one. Lindenwald has like a goldish kind of theme. I, I, I like. I could go just colors of high schools. I mean, just rattle them off. You got the Green Wave and Audubon. Haddonfield's a nice read a crisp you gotta stop mentioning high school you gotta stop mentioning <laughs> local high schools also as i'm picturing proms 
let me guess. You were definitely a guy in high school mm-hmm. that had the white tux. No. No, really? No. I would picture you as a white tux guy. No. Or, or like yellow, like a- something. Everybody else in my high school was wearing the white tux, if you could catch my drift. <laughs> I they, I am picking up what you're putting down. They they, they wore hats. They styling. Borrowed, they borrowed their grandfather's cane. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Stretch uh, limo? Uh, no, they couldn't afford those. But we... Oh, uh, Jesus, Dan. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I do not condone or support I, anything that this man says on this podcast. I, I can hardly contain myself from, and, and you'll get this reference, all I've been saying to people and they have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll just be like, we'll be right back. Actually, we'll keep it right here. And yeah. they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I watched another Adam Ray, Dr. Phil one with the guys from Workaholics. Oh yeah. my fucking God. It's it's the best thing. He's that, so funny, dude. He he is great. And then like I see other things. That, like, I don't even want to really watch watch him just doing regular crowd work even though he's great yeah. at it i was like i just want to watch you be dr phil like, yeah. that's amazing him as a character doing like i i told you about that one special uh on youtube he just put out the yeah. J- jeremy's I house watched- <laughs> it's just him being a fucking uh, i don't even know how to describe him he's, some he, guy who's mentally challenged he, he's like a homeless mentally challenged like and it's the funniest weirdest thing i've seen in so long and he has a lisp like, yeah just being able to talk like i couldn't talk in a lisp that dedicated for that long he, yeah he, he nails it dude and just yeah. like him riffing with the other comedians afterward he's really good at that dude yeah he's, yeah he's very good yeah um i would i'd love to work with that dude yeah yeah he's a friend of the podcast has no idea who we are but you know we'll plug it on here anyway no yeah. come off my dick we'll talk about it we'll uh <laughs> we'll keep it going no skin off my ass <laughs> so yeah so we were at um it's been a little bit so you um you you got married you did the damn thing yes oh you got a silicone ring too oh yeah is this wait no mine is rubber rubber 25 bucks amazon yeah dude uh forgot it at the wedding you wait you forgot Uh, yeah like i I don't know if you saw at the little ceremony oh yeah we we (laughs) fakes we both forgot our rings so neither of us had them and we fake we did a fake slip on damn yeah and then afterward you know um when we're at the bar everybody's like man real power move of you not wearing your ring i'm like i forgot it holy shit so it was not intentional damn that that is so funny because we were sitting there watching and might i add that is the youngest uh wedding audience i have ever fucking seen i mean i'm looking around and it's like uh, everybody in there was under 40 Obviously, had some family members there, but I was just looking. I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "Our wedding, I think, was just like all of our family members that were just like well, in their final days." But yeah, <laughs> so that's what it would have been if if we did something, you know, um, you know, conventional. Mm-hmm. But with uh, the the small lunch that we did, I I knew I couldn't invite really any family because then you know it's. 150 people yeah that's the, true the entire wedding would have just been my family yeah. and we were trying to do something super small so it was like i can't invite any family members yeah because then uh yeah it just Th- that's a great way to do crazy. it though because uh, like i've been there anybody else that's had a reg- run-of-the-mill not eloped type of wedding like you guys eloped and then you had like the celebration basically which is fucking amazing um are you everybody you have the wedding and then you're like forced by your parents or family members to invite your third removed aunts yeah. cousins, like and that type of stuff and it's like unless i like actively see you more than just at other people's weddings and funerals like yeah. why am
fucking blacked out. I was gonna say it wasn't a thing where you were just like lost your like you like weren't didn't there. Didn't know where I was at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, also, so it was a karaoke situation, and you forget that if you don't have the words in front of you, you know, bouncing on the yeah. on you know off of each word, you don't like Stay I didn't rhythm. I didn't know where to come in at. Yeah. So right off the bat, we were a fucking mess. <laughs> we we should have maybe. Uh, you know, ran it a couple times before yeah. we got up there in yeah. front of the whole wedding party. But you live and you learn. But, and I'll do it at my next wedding. Yeah, your next one. What, 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 <laughs> you're going to do Total Eclipse there too? Or yeah. you're just going to substitute, you know, somebody? Yeah, with my next wife, we'll run it, you know, and we'll make sure that we got it down pat before. You guys go to karaoke down. night at like yeah. the Spread Eagle Tavern in Belmar a few times. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You practice it a little bit. But, you know, yeah. the people just wanted to hear you do the, the thing from old school where I fucking need to yeah. on a night. Which we did hit that part it was just you guys were hitting that part it's just leading up to it it was like kind of and then like it, you know like okay this is it and then it just comes out of nowhere and you're just like i fucking need you and then people are like oh Fuck shit. yeah fucking need you now and I, oh that it, it's at the part where they go once upon a time i was falling in love yeah now i'm fucking falling <laughs> apart and you really hit the fucking yeah, hard you gotta really drop that hard f yeah and yeah all the aunts and uncles look up and they go what what did you just what, that's not the belinda carlisle i know and love yeah. yeah dude i was i was front row in that thing holding my phone up like this i was like a dad at the middle school dance for his kid and i'm just yeah, sitting there like any other yeah oh, it's always a middle school dancer you could have been at a t-swift <laughs> concert <laughs> No, that's just me at middle school dances. I just sign up to be a chaperone and then just show up. Yeah, they go, oh, what what grade is your, your kid in? You go, I don't have one. I don't have one. I'm just here for the party. Yeah. <laughs> I spiked the punch with Everclear. <laughs> yep, as he does. That's me. See, I always find my way back. It's either find that or... way back to oh, oh. admit to an alleged crime of being a creep. <laughs> ah, oh, local reference Callahan. Local it's reference again. Callahan. Holy shit. I, I did that at that Del Ranch show, by the way. I didn't know that Carly Lloyd was was not um, loved by the people of Del Rand, New Jersey. Now, who is Carly Lewis? Team USA, woman soccer player. What you said that as if I, I would jump on that? Uh, like, of course I know who Carly. You Lewis don't know is. who Carly Lloyd is? She's up there with Megan Rapinoe, and uh, what was the what was the name of? I the... don't know one female you... athlete's name besides maybe Lisa Leslie. Lisa and... Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the right. got milk commercials. She's yeah. got the white stash. Or Serena, you know, the obvious one, Serena Venus. Yeah. I mean, Serena and Venus, I only know That sounds from the... real misogynistic, but I, I'm just being honest. But, it's been a minute. I, I don't watch a lot of sports in general. No, but those broads are at the top of their game, or at least they were back in 98, I think. Well, Serena and Venus, Lisa Leslie was more of like a, she probably retired in the early 2000s. Yeah. Maybe. But Venus and Serena, I mean, I could just know them. Like, you could have a lineup of people and I could close my eyes and ask them all to grunt a few times and I could pick out which one was serena and venus well yeah you you really yeah. are big fans of, of yeah. theirs and yeah you've talked about them being your dream women yeah multiple times. i just put their tennis highlights on my phone on youtube and i'll turn it on full blast and just put my phone down and i'll just listen to it and just rub and, one out yeah 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 just yeah. yeah that's that's typically what i do it's any given tuesday morning for any given tuesday yeah <laughs> great great um, movie wait so is carly lloyd the one that uh like took her shirt off like bend it like beckham situation no, i would have remembered if she did that but no it was um it was team usa um who, what was the hope, hope solo you remember that girl i remember the name she beat the shit out of her boyfriend i think oh you, okay I, I remember i remember the story i love a good professional athlete domestic violence story when it's not a guy doing it that's so her name is hope solo hope solo sounds that, like a porn star but yeah. soccer player yeah it sounds like a star wars <laughs> porn themed yeah like yeah. Ho Hope Solo, that's definitely their parents. Definitely were like, we're gonna go full Star Wars. I yeah, guess. yeah. Princess Hope Solo, like they were just picking and choosing from any. Of yeah, that's what it sounds like. Because Star Wars, uh, the one of the movies is there's something Hope, a New Hope. Is there? I don't and know. And then Han Solo. So Han they probably, Solo. It's probably yeah. a Star Wars. Yeah. We'll, we'll Google it later. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail us. No, I'm trying to think of other players that are on that team. You have Megan Rapinoe because she's always like at fucking Congress or the Senate somewhere. Um, but uh, that t women's uh, team that played in Team USA, like they, I think they won gold medal a few times. Okay. Um, Carly Lloyd is from Del Ran though. She went, oh. she went to Del Ran High School. Oh, I didn't know that. And played at Rutgers. Yeah. Um, and I, I grew up a couple of towns over from Del Ran. So at that show, I was hosting. So I made, I like asked the guy just sitting front row. I was like, hey, you're probably from Riverside, right? He's like, actually, I am. And then I was just making Riverside references. People were eating it up, like whatever. So as I was bringing people up, I was just dropping local references 
reference jokes as I was bringing people up, and they were just like, "Oh fuck!" Like he he knows like the name of the diner in Cinnamon, and this is fucking amazing. So like for whatever reason, I love that that's your strategy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going to go up and just drop local. I mean, there was like jokes built around them, but of just course, the fact course. that the local reference is the thing. So at the end of the show, I was like, um, I think it was Andrew Boss or maybe even Paul Carson told me, they're like, go up there and like make a Carly Lloyd reference. It's going to fucking blow the roof off the place. I was like, that's fucking amazing. I go up there and said that Car- I was like, hey, you know, thanks for coming out tonight. I do want to give a special shout out to a very special guest that's here tonight. Everyone give it up for Carly Lloyd sitting right in the back. Nobody turned around and they just looked at me with disgust and they just got up and walked out i was like what the they, fuck was that they got up and left at the end of the show oh. it was the end that <laughs> yeah, i was just as like people do at the end of shows but but like they just looked like ugh. like they didn't even look that no one was like i was like what the fuck was that those yeah, girls like you got no reaction yeah and that's why those girls came up to me after because they were oh. like you know we went to delray in high school and carly lloyd was frequently a guest or asked to come speak or whatever and apparently she is a huge bitch uh, really that's what they said not my not my words not the they words said, out of his ass no they did not come out of my ass no i would Wow. Never. So I was like, what the fuck? I was did, like, they, did they say why? Is she just They said that they asked her to come speak on Veterans Day. Well, here's the thing. You know, people <laughs> always have they, they want their moment of knowing a famous per- person and yeah. having their negative story about them. Yeah. I figured it was something like that. They're like they're probably just pissed because they ask her to come back to town all the time. She's like, I don't want to come back to fucking yeah. dirty ass Del Rand. That's fuck no. And they're like, well, she's a bitch. It's like, no, she's just on to bigger and better things. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, she was only playing, uh, you know, at the top, you know, uh, level yeah. of her sport. I don't want to come to a high school and speak on fucking Veterans Day about my fucking butthole. Who gives a shit? <laughs> And she did not give a shit about it either because apparently they were all like, eh, like it's Veterans Day. I thought there would be a Marine here or maybe SEAL Team 6. Maybe we would reenact yeah. shooting Bin Laden or something. But we got- yeah, that, that's, that's what <laughs> most high schools do on Veterans Day. They reenact the shooting of Bin Laden. <laughs> Clear. Uh, they, they just bring him in and the guy's just talking. He's just walking through like exactly how it went down when they raided the house and, you know, uh, right. you know did what they had to do to uh, one of our, our biggest idols. Osama. Wait, let me give Carly Lloyd a goog because she, you'll recognize her. She might have been in this show that I was watching. Speaking of the troops, uh, special forces, where they take celebrities and they put them through special forces training. Huh? And she might have been the one. Let me see. Wait, is this her? I hope yeah, it is. yeah, this was her. So I do know who this is yeah. because I watched the show Special Forces. She yeah. makes it to the very end. Really? She's the final. No, she wins. Really? She wins with uh, Hannah from The Bachelorette. Jesus. Yeah, they. I, I didn't. Uh, show is dog shit. <laughs> it, it, that version is is but, absolutely. But they dog had shit. somebody from The Bachelorette, and you're like, I'm fucking in. <laughs> yeah, you know me. I'm a big fan of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Yeah, and. Um, there's also there's that older version now they call it like uh, the golden bachelor yeah they it's or like something. fucking uh, I don't know gra- grandmom's getting <laughs> getting railed or <laughs> the version of the bachelor no, or I've something. seen that video of grandma getting railed that's not on ABC primetime but <laughs> I think the golden bachelor I guess like golden years and it's just like old people looking for love it's old people bachelor um, I believe is the title and there is a woman on there yeah. from Pennsylvania that I'm pretty sure used to come to our comedy shows so they marry like, Pat? No, no. I, like, uh, yeah, you would think. But uh, she would come to our comedy shows at like the Robin's Nest. And stuff. I don't know if maybe it was like a friend of Gino's or something, but I'm like, I know that lady. Really? I'm to, wondering I'll who to, this is. Uh, well, I have to, we'll bring it up here. But uh, fr- yeah. friend of the show. A friend of the show. Fans of Dan and I. Seen us talk will, about her dicks above a, a bakery in Mount Holly, New Jersey a few times. I'm sure she remembers us, and I'm sure she's still a fan. Do you think she's still available is the next thing? We'll see. We'll have to watch the end of the show. Fuck. We now should I'm have invested. her on as a guest. We should bring her on. That would be an actually great a uh, South Jersey celebrity. Yeah, get a hot older woman on here. Hot older. Well, how does that show go? Like, what... What is the, uh, like, it's just old people on there? Like, yeah, I think the, the a bunch of old people go on there. There's the one older bachelor guy, and then he goes through all their insurance policies, and he looks through and sees <laughs> who has the best one, and then he picks yeah, the yeah. best fit. They have, like, a candlelit dinner, but it's at, like, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, <laughs> and he goes, all right, this this old geezer's probably got five years left. Yeah, that's not wine they're drinking. It's just apple juice, just yep. shit like that. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. I, I'm, I'm glad that they're doing something other than elder abuse. Yeah, on, it, yeah. It, it's a, a 
an awful, embarrassing looking <laughs> show. I, I I caught a glimpse of it, and it's just really weird. They're like all dancing around each other. Oh, and, damn. Uh, is it like set in you like You feel a, bad because you're like, you, you just picture that being like your mom or something. Oh, who's, shit. And it's like most of them, it's like, well, yeah, my husband died and now I'm looking. And oh, like, man. It's, it's sad. So it's not like young, bright eyed, 22 year old dental hygienist. <laughs> you know, these are like old women who are like, I got. so sad oh she man. just falls asleep in the whole thing <laughs> it's pretty it, honestly now that i'm saying it it's it's pretty awesome uh, it, that actually i was gonna say oh this is a nice show it's yeah. i said it was what didn't involve any elder abuse but it sounds like it does actually yeah i i think uh i think it does any of these grannies get their uh, social security checks stolen by the golden bachelor probably <laughs> that's what i'd be doing on there we should apply to be the golden bachelor and we're going after nothing but cougar not cougars these these women need to be far beyond cougars yeah they got to be twice divorced and widowed and at least 70 plus yeah yeah you, you ever uh you ever have to you know say hello to like an older family member and they're so like wrinkly in the face and you got to kiss those wrinkles yeah and you feel the texture yeah like, it's oh. like a nice texture there it's kind of like biting into a uh, pint of rocky road you know sure i don't know about <laughs> i don't know about that but i can imagine oh yeah yeah Some you love hardened to rocky road Damn, I, I wonder what the criteria is, because obviously with a lot of shows on ABC, they want to have the heartfelt story, right? They want to find something like somebody who's widowed or their husband died or something like that. Yeah. But they got to be going after some people that have some medical ailments, right? Like, that's got to... I didn't see anybody disabled on the show. Um, there, there could be. I'm sure they all have their own issues, yeah. you know, hip replacements, what have you. But yeah. um, nothing that stood out. Is nobody in a wheelchair or any, anything like that? Um, they kept it pretty even. Yeah. No, um, no one with dementia or Alzheimer's. They or might, like that. they might, I'm sure that, you know, but yeah, it's just sad. It, <laughs> it's really sad to watch. I, it does sound a little more interesting than the standard 22 year old dental hygienist though. Cause those, yeah. those ones get old after a while. We all know the type, you know? Yeah. So these ones, at least they change it up. So, right. Yeah. Um, how was the honeymoon though? It was great. Dude went to, um, Mexico as they say, as the Mexicans say. Yeah, yep. Uh, it was muy good. Muy, muy good. Up some Spanish while I was there. Was the hotel down on uh, Uno Street or something? Uh, it might have been Dos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might have been Dos, but um, it was fucking awesome, dude. It, we we just uh, stayed at all-inclusive. It's exactly, exactly what daddy needed, dude. Yeah. You just sit out in the sun, drink all day. We did like a spa day, swam with the Dolphs. Oh, fuck. Did a little excursion there that was pretty cool. What was the excursion? Did you go to uh, some cenotes? It was uh, it was the dolphins. That was oh the uh, dolphins was yeah, the excursion. Yeah. Gotcha. The dolphins. I mean, that's pretty fun. I've never swam with dolphins before, but they they are known to rape. Did you know that? That is true. Did anyone any of them try and flip you over or uh, no? They they didn't uh, they didn't try that with me. I think they they knew that I would have handled them. Yeah, would have karate chopped a dolphin right in the stomach if yeah. they you know tried to get busy with me. They they saw the rubber ring on your finger and it just gave them PTSD about all of the fucking plastic that's in their fat in yep. their mouth yeah yep. damn but well, yeah i mean dolphins are crazy dude they're like they're like water dogs they're doing tricks they're doing backflips yeah you know they're uh they they do all sorts of tricks they're like speak and you know paul and you know the whole thing yeah they give you their paul flipper gets a little handsy you know yeah but, um, so we did do uh this which was pretty cool you go out in the like the middle of the, the you know, it's like a, in an enclosed Little cove, if you will. Little cove in. in it's not the, a pool, though. It's the actual. It's the ocean. Yeah, it tastes a little salty. Yeah, it's All just right. like off of off of a dock. Yeah, and you go out in the middle, and then they have two dolphins come behind you, and like you lay flat with your legs yeah. straight, <laughs> in completely in sync. The dolphins push you with their noses on each of your feet, 
and you fly out of the water like this <laughs> and they push you across the water like you're Jesus Christ oh fuck coming to to save the world it was incredible so it just feels like you're just sitting in the water and then all of a sudden you're like elevating and you just feel their noses on your feet and they push you completely at the same time and they push you out of the water. They gotta be pretty strong to split like oh, they're a big dude. It was a little scary when you first get in the water because they look like sharks, and you're like, "Holy shit! I've never been this close to a dolphin before." And they're they're pretty big too. They, did they have some meat on their bones or? Yeah, dude, yeah. They're, they're very large. Yeah, large and in charge. Like I'm thinking, like what, you're like a buck ninety five, sopping wet. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm five seven. If I'm a buck ninety five, no, but I'm I'm pushing. I'm gaining some weight. I'm like one eighty right now. Oh, I was gonna say one eighty five, one ninety five, something like that. But I'm I'm a little man, so that's a lot. That's yeah, a lot. Because of... I mean, if you just split that in half and then just put like one foot on this like they split your weight in half on the nose yeah and pushing that i mean that's a lot of fucking weight on a beak i mean yeah jeez they, no they're big and they're strong as fuck yeah they jump out of the water and do a backflip and they they have to be like easily 10 feet in the air <laughs> fuck it's crazy yeah you know, what else is scary too is they like after they do a trick or something and then the the trainer calls them back within one second you don't even see them under the water they're right back up in front of you and you're like oh my like you picture that if that was a shark how that would be the scariest like you, you always picture you're like if i got attacked by a shark people say you fucking punch it in the face or you take its <laughs> balls or whatever you do to get out of there yeah you don't even have time it would be the scariest thing because you don't have any time to see it before you know it they swim 50 yards out yeah. to you in one second and they're right in front of you and they would just <sighs> eat you whole damn it's yeah. like that old uh that old saying everybody has a plan until a dolphin mounts you yeah yeah, yep. yeah. I and mean, i've been there quite a few times myself at yeah. least down in avalon not cancun of course and but yeah, what's, avalon dolphins are different. i was gonna say what's the difference between mexican dolphins and wildwood dolphins per se well i was gonna say avalon dolphins have a timeshare yeah, yeah. So where they stay at Wildwood Dolphins usually are carrying a knife. Yeah, I was gonna say, where, do they have pockets? Is the knife just they keep it between their teeth? They they keep a little knife in their in their blowhole. <laughs> you know, uh, but if they keep a knife in their blowhole, they got to take that Lucy out of there. They yeah, gotta get that cigarette somewhere else. Yep, exactly. Um, and that, the Mexican dolphins, um, they're just so hyper because of all the coke they're smuggling. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I was trying to think of something uh, stereotypical to to say, but you nailed it. Nailed it right there. Everyone's complaining right now about the border and all the drugs coming over this and that, but it's just like if it's fucking dolphins doing it, and if they're migrating from the Gulf of Mexico and they're coming up to Avalon, I mean, I didn't think about it, but you should have strapped a few kilos to them and just sent them this way. Yeah, I mean, you should set a couple free and go, hey man, get yeah. out of this enclosure and yeah. You know, take this uh, this drug money for your family. And you guys did stay in Cancun? Stayed in Cancun, yeah, just, you know, in the resort. But uh, you do really quickly feel like the douchey white guy in the Hawaiian shirt trying to, uh, you know, become part of the culture where, like, you know, somebody brings... You just described me. Yeah. <laughs> somebody brings you a drink and you're like um gracias you know you feel like you're like fuck it. we are such dumb americans like I, I, I don't know i'm like i speak like three words of spanish i'm like dude i'm so uncultured i can't tell you how many times i have felt that wave of i should not be allowed to leave south jersey and travel yeah like yeah. you just feel like such a piece of shit when you go somewhere else yeah you're like god i i just uh i i don't know anything yeah about other cultures i'm so uncultured yeah you just try and like you want to speak you know their language but then you sound like such a dickhead yeah. doing it uh muy gracias <laughs> you're like very thank you and you're like i don't fucking yeah know, just i'll take a beer yeah i'll I mean, take it to secchies meanwhile all these people in other countries can speak multiple languages yeah and like we like i don't even we know what refuse the to to adapt participate yeah, yeah no we barely know how to speak english properly i mean listen to the way we pronounce words in this region it's pretty fucking yeah. wild you, you try and I try and adjust that when I travel sometimes too. Other people really want to lean into it. They're like, no, see, we say water. And I'm just like, I'm not going to have them try and dissect the dialects of the, the United States yeah. accents. Yeah. I'll just say, yes, I'll have some water, please. Yeah, <laughs> even that, I, like, that sounded so like you, forced. You, you still got to work on that. Say water again. Water. Okay. That was a little, that was better. A little better, but water. Water. Really put an emphasis on the T. Yeah. Um, when we were in Portugal, people were so like, 
um, I, I finally like got it. When I would go up to people and just assume that they spoke English in some areas where they definitely did not. Yeah. And I would just like say like at a cash register or something in a gas station, we would frequently stop and I would have to go in and pay. And they would talk to me in Portuguese and I would respond in English like, oh, no, sorry, I don't speak any. And then they were just like, like, what the fuck ever then? Like, don't talk to me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. Now I know what it, now I know what it feels like in America when someone like speaks Spanish to you or they're talking and I'm just like. Yeah. You get all fucking upset about it. And but I'm like, oh, I'm, now I'm that person. If you do hit uh, like the right note, if you if they say something to you and you, you remember and you respond back in Espanol, you yeah. do feel fucking incredible. Yeah. You're like, what, who am I, James Bond, dude? Yeah. <laughs> like uh, they said, uh, like they would be like, uh, like uh, Espanol and I'd be like, poquito. And they're like, whoa, poquito, little, poquito. And you go, but you got to do the expression too. You go, Poquito. Yeah. <laughs> little, little poquito. And then I got a laugh, too, because I said, uh, poquito, yo soy muy blanco. <laughs> I am very white. Yeah. Well, so got a little laugh there in another language. So I don't know what to say. Uh, you're an international. International so, businessman. Yeah. Blanco is the only word you need to know when in Cancun. If you just go up to anybody in a dark alley somewhere, cab driver, if you just say Blanco, they'll take you to this guy named Hector. He's in downtown Cancun, okay. Cancun right behind the Senor Frogs, if you saw that. Sure. Um, there was actually a guy I met there that was from Northeast Philly. And of course, if, you <laughs> run into the guy from Northeast Philly. Yeah, and he was talking in a very thick accent. And then North after East Philly accent? No, no, you know, um, Span like Spanish, uh, uh, Mexican, I don't know, Mexican accent, Spanish, uh, big booty Latina. I don't, I don't know what, <laughs> but the Northeast still comes out. It oh, yo, <laughs> yo, soy, <laughs> <laughs> yo, soy, me llamo, uh, me llamo Dan Callahan. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't at all though. It. it <laughs> That's what I sounded like to him, and then he's like, "Oh, you're you're from Philadelphia." I said, "I'm Indian." Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Apu, I believe. Yeah, hello, Jesus. you are you from Philadelphia? Cancun. I don't think you were in Cancun. I think you were in uh, New Delhi. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know. Or I was in a Seven Eleven in Collingwood. I have no idea. <laughs> just on mushrooms. Yeah, I, I, yeah. That, you've been there. You, I have been there. If you been just you. if you pop a couple of dry shroomies and you just head on down to any Seven Eleven in Camden County, you might think you're in another country that's my traveling you might be a redneck <laughs> you might be on mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> i man again with the accents yeah really, yeah i really do a good jeff good. i do a good jeff foxworthy let's hear it i've heard a lot of people say i have a very good jeff foxworthy really? i yeah. would love to hear a piece yeah so it's a little bit of like a get her done that's larry the king <laughs> yeah. uh how about um uh let's see uh, you might be a redneck is, is jeff foxworthy yeah be a redneck not bad not yeah bad. it's getting there the little crack of the voice and everything i've been yeah. listening to a lot of ron white <laughs> recently yeah yeah now that there is a guy the blue collar comedy tours i mean i would just watch those on dvds as a kid and then i just wanted to be a redneck yeah it says a lot about your comedy you have very larry the cable guy energy yeah yep i, d I frequently do give off that i, I wear plaid uh, sleeveless vests and such yep um but uh oh yeah the uh how about speaking of the local Philadelphia accents and everything the old sillies uh did not get back to the World Series that was fucking brutal man mm -hmm. to go up two nothing and then uh and then blow a dick and lose four three Jesus yeah Christ. that game seven was tough to watch dude yeah I mean, game six and seven just seeing us not being able to hit the ball mainly because of the the stark differences between games one and two mm -hmm. where it, oh any swing of the bat the ball was going 395 yards out when, of the when schwarber and bryce harper hit the those homers off the first pitches in i think it was game two yeah i was and then we went up like 10, 10 nothing that one game i'm like freak dude this is in the bag world yeah. series yeah let's get ready for the parade yeah and then just to watch us slowly blow it i'm like guys <laughs> what the like that was tough man we yeah. like we've had a tough go with the super bowl last year us yeah. blowing it in the playoffs last year the sixers fucking stink i i just i just don't think philadelphia is a city that can handle having multiple good teams at once 
Yeah. You need to centralize, just like trade off the, the different sports. Like Eagles can be really good when they start sucking, then it's time for the Flyers to be really good. Yeah. Just we can't have. I think Eagles is our, I mean, obviously, I mean, what choice do we have? But Eagles is obviously our squad this I, year. I think it should be the Eagles. The Phillies, I think they need to burn off a lot of what's going on there and reset. Hey, I don't. I mean, they're still young, right? I mean, oh yeah, not not the team itself, but I think they just need to suck for a little bit, bur- burn off some of the people that like. I, I I don't know what it was, but like in the stadiums, I feel like Philadelphia sports fans in general um, now have this whole like perception of like the national media and just the general sports fans throughout the country that Philly fans are degenerates, they're stupid and violent. So now everybody well, all true. Yeah, which is true, but everybody leans into it so hard, yeah. and it just is too much for me. Like people I know that are genuinely good people with four hundred one ks and full time jobs are just like, yeah, we're gonna fuck it. Like they just act like the biggest pieces of shit just because it's like we got to lean into this. Yeah, and it's like, why don't you just be degenerates like us in general? But that's true. It, we we tend to get a little carried away at yeah. times. Yeah, know, especially at a home game. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you, it's like dangerous, dude. You, it is. If you go to yeah. Citizens Bank Park. During a Phillies playoff game, yeah. you want to have a couple boys with you in, in case some shit goes down. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, there's fucking people there. Even if it doesn't matter if there's a kid wearing a Diamondbacks jersey, he's getting fucking D batteries thrown at him. Yeah, I mean, now that that's something I can get behind. And Diamondbacks, people wanted to like hate them, and I was like, you guys forget these Diamondbacks had the sickest fucking retro jerseys ever. Oh, yeah. You remember their jerseys? They were purple and teal. Yeah, like, yeah, those were pretty sick. They were prime '90s colors. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to give them any. Pr- Props, but those those jerseys were sick. Back in uh, they won the World Series in two thousand one, so it's been a while. It's been twenty two years since they've been to the World Series. I like it when it, it, it would be better than like the fucking Astros versus you know uh, the fucking Braves or something. Yeah, like, let's get some new fresh teams that haven't been there in a little yeah. bit. So I like that. I just loved. I mean, like I love our team this year, and I really thought just with the energy we were bringing in the playoffs this year, I was like, dude, we're we're fucking winning this World Series. Yeah. I thought it had it in the bag. We're already looking three weeks ahead to be like, okay, so if the World Series is over, I know some people that were like, well, if necessary, games go into November 8th and 9th, but like we would win it in four, like we would sweep. Yeah. So, like, well, let's plan on this. Like, people were already planning out a yeah. theoretical parade if they sweep the World Series. Like, oh. it was wild. Yeah. We really thought, I mean, just to see us one by one, like with those. Yeah with those games just go down you're like okay yeah. well and then when we came back we won that game in arizona i'm like all right dude just yeah. one more yeah yep and get them we'll get it done and then we're like okay game seven not a problem we're at home we're gonna fucking take this in the after their their first run batted in you're like fuck yeah you're fucked dude. yeah Man, that was uh, yeah. Because I mean, you weren't expecting them to watch. lose at home, especially with how hot the bats were. Um, and yeah. also, speaking of Diamondbacks too, they um, they were the team that beat the Yankees right after nine eleven in the World Series. I mean, how could you not love a team like that? <laughs> yeah, dude, what a tough year for New York, two thousand one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, Jesus. they had it all. The, everybody rallied around. I, mean, I can't believe they went like George Bush went that far for the Yankees to have so much momentum behind them to like not only crash those fucking planes, but then also like we got the Yankees a World Series. Yeah, we just got so much momentum. Everybody's rooting for the New York team, and then the fucking Diamondbacks, Luis. Gonzalez just can't remember him. Lefty leadoff hitter for uh, the Diamondbacks. <laughs> Fuck. Between him and old Randy Johnson. Oh um, yeah, I remember Randy Johnson. Randy, he hit that fucking bird. I that mean, pigeon. Yeah. Or that uh, dove. Yeah. <laughs> How wild was that? What are the odds of throwing a fucking heater right down the dick and then a bird just comes flying the fucking? Imagine going up to bat against Randy Johnson. How terrifying that would have been. Like he was huge. Yeah. And now he's a sports photographer. Is he? he? Yeah. He's a photo- He'll like shoot uh, like a. <laughs> he's a bird him. watcher actually. He, he is. He'll sit out in like a fucking bird stand and just take pictures of these. <laughs> fucking mallards and i'm like that's really comes full circle well, that honestly looks probably even more terrifying is randy johnson in the stands taking <laughs> photos yeah. than randy johnson on the mound yeah <laughs> like he's a terrifying looking dude he's just sitting over like where all the photographers stand by the dugouts and he's with just in there with, yeah with these the fucking lens that's like this fucking long hey randy <laughs> People are Quit taking them. pictures of the birds and my girlfriend's tits <laughs> i don't know why they would be country but 
damn, we should pose as sports photographers and just get press passes to get into games with these lenses and just zoom in on tits in like section 250. Yeah, it's a good idea. Not a bad idea. Yeah. You just, you look legit. You can wear the vest with the different lenses and the film if they still use that. Yeah. And uh, just really fucking score that puppy in on the broad with the C cups in section 112 row uh, four. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would do um, in that situation. Yeah, we know. Um, I, I do think some of the players in the Sillies, though, need to uh, change the walk up songs now. I think it's time. They, they've kind of stuck with the uh, living in this new world. I think living they got it. Between, yeah. between that. Certain players do. Yeah, because it's like, hey, there's certain players that went cold. Yeah. Hey, let, let's switch it up. Yeah. The AO, AO. Like, it's, it's turning into, like, I feel like I'm watching European soccer games. Like, you know how the yeah. whole stadium I, is just. Singing? I do like, though, that they. This, uh, the songs that they've picked, some of them are fun, and then yeah. like you get to know them, and then the whole stadium starts going along with yeah. it. Yeah, that's but, co- like dancing on my own is now like a Philly. <laughs> You got B, uh, um, uh, BBW. BBW is not is, the BBBW. There's not big, to be mistaken for big, beautiful, um, breasted. Big, beautiful, bl- black breasted. Um, it sounds like a bird, like a breasted robin or something, but yeah. like big, beautiful, breasted black women. Yep. Um, yeah. The, actually, the state bird of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I think T.I.'s been engaged to a few of those. I mean, um, so yeah, we got to get some of those backup singers in here. Could you imagine just having like a, I'm talking like Baptist church, like, you know, the entire awesome. choir wearing like purple and they like, yeah. it's not even, a, like I've seen like some white people in these in the Southern Baptist churches, but it's primarily black people, but they know how to fucking sing and get a party going in a church at 8 a.m. on Their a Sunday. Church, I mean, black church has got to be so much better than, than white church. A, than any other other religious thing yeah like religious ceremony you know church or mass on sunday I yeah mean, god could white people make it any more fucking boring yeah and the songs they fucking stink can we get an update 
you know, can we it, can we add some flavor to the Eucharist? Yeah. And I mean, some of the non-denominational churches are trying to do that. They're largely white, but they will have like somebody up there with a drum set and a little bass guitar, and they're trying to play some music. That. Yeah. But it's nothing like the Baptist churches, where yeah, they just have powerhouse Aretha Franklin level singers. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about a fucking ballad. Everybody's got their hands up, and it's just like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if we're gonna be sitting through this bullshit, anyways, can we have some good songs? Yeah, yeah, because you've been to church growing up a lot. So did I. I was an altar boy till fifth grade till I had that incident with Father O'Coughlin. But when after that happened, it, I'll tell you who was O'Coughlin that day. <laughs> yeah, you give me a nice hard cough there. <laughs> That's what was going on. How do you think Yikes. you got the name? My priest actually growing up uh, died on Christmas Eve. We were sitting in there for Christmas Eve mass. Oh, beautiful! And it's like we had a little delay a game. There was a they threw a flag on the play. It was supposed to be like the midnight mass type of okay. you remember that on like christmas oh, eve yeah. i was like remember that as if they still don't do it but uh <laughs> midnight mass christmas eve got drugged there by the parents it's like well past midnight now it's like going after quarter after you know so we're still sitting there and they're like oh i'll be here soon then they come out and they're just like uh we have a slight change of plans they had a substitute come in the sixth man stepped up to the plate okay gave the old sermons and everything yeah. but then later we found out that they actually went into the rectory and the priest was dead in a recliner wow and he was like in his 60s maybe late 50s oh, or early 60s and then there was nothing i never heard anything after that they were just like yeah just like swap them out we're gonna get the new guy in white in wow lord took him back yeah i don't know if his collar was a little too tight what happened uh but yeah so that happened he was praying way too fucking hard yeah yeah <laughs> no what the fuck he was praying for who he pissed off in the catholic church but yeah we would go there and you know the songs that they would always sing white people cannot make them any more boring there's no really good lyrics yeah there's nothing really it's just amazing they, they don't even hit you with a good song like amazing grace it's no. like the, ha ha men <laughs> ha ha <laughs> men <laughs> Oh, 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 man. And then did you ever have this happen? Then you go to like a, a church in a, the town next over and they change it slightly, just slightly mm-hmm. the melody where you go, that's not amen. Oh, yeah. You're fucking that up. <laughs> that it's or they. Oh, oh, man. That's how it goes. Yeah. And then you go somewhere else and they're like, amen. Oh, oh, amen. <laughs> you're like, oh, too quick. Yeah. Too quick. Can or you guys clearly don't know the lyrics or they change the cadence of stuff or just slight little word changes i feel like they do that yeah. just to be able to call out the people that haven't been in a long time yeah just uh, to keep you on your toes yeah yeah you or you could go like you said the one town over you go over there and instead of when the priest says uh you know wh- what do they say when they hold stuff up Like, I'm sitting, but my knees are down enough. Like, you don't yeah. want to get full blown in the pews. The yeah. kneeling's brutal. Dude. Yeah. I don't know why the fucking all these old white people are able to do this shit. And you can't be one of those pussies that caves where your butt hits the back of the pew. You got to go straight up. Yeah. Otherwise, you look like a lazy straight, piece of shit. Straight back. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know those, what I'm saying? Where you get the, you, the lounge when you're kneeling. Oh, yeah. That's what I was like. Your, your hat- teachers would go, sit. Yeah, you get the you, you kneel, get, kneel straight. You get that tight little behind off that fucking seat. Yeah, yeah. I would get that all the time. And you know, I'd go and I would dress up for church. So when I had my cargo shorts on, and I would have to get full blown, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have the zip offs of the, of the yeah. long cargo shorts. You nah, zip them off. I, I would zip them off down there, but I had the pockets on either side, so I could <laughs> I could steal some uh, Bibles if I wanted to. Sure, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. But I was doing that to like then donate them to the community. I don't have a stack of them or a Book of Mormon upstairs. It's a it's completely you know it was betterment of the community yeah um but I, I did steal a few eucharists in my time those things are nice you ever get a nice crisp eucharist yeah i mean when they're crisp if 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 they were toasted right they weren't bad mm-hmm. but if you get a soggy one ugh. yeah it's like having a it's like a bag of cheese it's and some of them are stale you know yeah or like a piece of toast where you're like you know i wanted a little bit burnt dude. yeah i wanted yeah. a little a little toasty Is yeah my phone? yeah it might be on there there we go um, but 
Yeah, I mean, fucking, we should just join a church. That's what it's coming down to. Yeah, I think we need to get you back in there. I think that you got some things to confess and, and to think about. And Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to go in uh, the confessional booths. It was always funny going in there. They have, like, the window that, like, you can't fully see through on there. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> such a small school where it's, like, obviously they know it's you, Dan. Yeah, and it's, like, sometimes, they, like, they personally know everybody, especially when you're going yeah, they're for... like, do you want to go anonymous? And you're, like, sure. Like, they obviously, <laughs> there's 30 kids in this class, uh, Father john's gonna know that this is me yeah yeah i uh fucking uh, slash father john's tires feel really <laughs> bad about it he's like huh really um well i don't know who this is but i think jesus would tell you to go fuck yourself <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you would also say to get out there with a, you better have a fucking tire iron on there and you better learn how to change a flat and you're going to get me a pair of good years. Yeah, that's, uh, it was always funny when they would go in there, especially when you're prepping for your first Holy Communion and uh, confirmation in eighth grade. Yeah. Um, cause I, I left the uh, Catholic school in third, after third grade. Yeah. So I did removed. I was, yeah, I was removed is what they wanted to call it. Uh, honorably discharged. Sure. Um, but there was some discharge coming out of me in that back confessional room, but you remember when they would, I forget whether, it, <laughs> I forget whether it was communion or confirmation, but it was, uh, it wasn't even either actually your first confession. Yep. And they would tell you to go in there and, like, you had to think of something you were confessing. Yeah, how weird is that for a second grader to be like, go and say all the bad shit that you did and you're in there and you're like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I think I made something up. Yeah, was, you always were making shit up because you, you don't know. You're like, I, I was fuck, I didn't do my homework. Yeah, it was always was something mean like... mean to my mom. Yeah. Called yeah. my sister a bitch. <laughs> I cursed. Slash some tires. I think that's usually what... That has to be the standard. Like, I, I said a curse word. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, no second graders going in they're like i fucking had unprotected sex i uh <laughs> murdered somebody last night yeah. there's nothing that heavy i baked a little too much fentanyl into that coke <laughs> yeah, put a little too much on the game last night yeah yeah which yeah. actually it had a lot riding on the orange team <laughs> The orange CYO team. The orange CYO teams were always way better than the... Do you remember specifically, like, the... Co I feel like I could remember the colors of the teams of any given sports season. Uh, blue, blue team always fucking took the championship. Yeah. It was because, yeah, the best color. Yeah. So they had the confidence. Royal blue, though. The powder blue teams fucking were terrible. Yeah, they were pussies. Yeah. I remember our basketball teams growing up, not CYO, but just general township teams. They would do, like, a draft where the... Uh, coaches you know my dad coached one year and some of my friends dads were coaches and they got to draft players and stuff and my dad uh was just like i don't know why the fuck he was like picking some people that i was friends with and had no business being on a basketball court yeah meanwhile my other friends dads knew the players and knew who was good because like you go to a draft you don't know any of these fucking yeah, kids yeah, he looks tall i'll take him it's something. not even looking at him it's like you just have names on a sheet and it's like yeah. i guess i'll go with that kid and then they show up to practice and it's like fuck this kid yeah so my dad drafted probably the best player on there and he just had nothing but me and everybody else who fucking sucked mm. and you have a really good player and the kid was just like oh fuck this i'm not playing for this fucking team he just never showed up yo so then i was fucking running point guard you know i was like the tallest kid out there at that time I was a push of maybe five foot six. Oh wow know? it's a male american average yeah yeah so <laughs> i was fucking running point i couldn't dribble i couldn't even fucking do a spin move but yeah. you know we were just setting picks and just getting steamrolled every single game yeah but just going out and just finding drafting kids we we had the pounder blues that that year and i think we went one and twelve <laughs> <laughs> yeah it makes sense it makes sense. Yeah, the Powder Blues were never a great squad. No, them and even Greens weren't that good, but it was usually... The black team? Black teams were always good. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, I'm talking about the jerseys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, nah, if we're talking about the jerseys... You, the all-black t-shirt team... They were fuck. They, they, those those dudes were badass. Yeah, they yeah. always took the the W. They, you know, they would slide tackle you, <laughs> you <laughs> on know. the soccer field too. Wherever, whatever uh, intramural sport. If you were the black team, um, you had a good squad. Yeah, yeah. I was on one of those black teams one time, and we did win the championship. Yeah, yeah. We had the black t-shirts and also a mostly black squad. So that I mean, is, uh, that's key. a fucking double jeopardy that's, right there. That, <laughs> I don't think double jeopardy. I think that's when you murder somebody, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. That's um, double whammy, double, double, homicide. Yeah, I think it's double double jeopardy. I believe is where you can't be tried for the same murder. Like if like OJ, he couldn't be retried because he was already um, acquitted. acquitted. 
So he, they can't retry him. He could come out today and say, I murdered those two fucking pasty bitches. And uh, he couldn't go to prison for really? it. Really? I think that's called double jeopardy. What a dumb it, rule. That can't be. That I think that is the case. That you can't be tried for the same murder. If Even if they find new not, evidence later on? Not guilty or acquitted. I don't think they can bring you back into it. Really? Yeah. I mean, we might have to just try it out and see what happens. Well, um, I guess that similar to how cosby got out because they had something on you know on him where yeah he made a deal early on where they're like you can't use this evidence against me which yeah. they did which is how he got convicted and then they they oh. went back to trial and they were like hey you technically weren't allowed to use that <laughs> so now he's out on a technicality even <laughs> though he's like i admitted to some stuff yeah that they used against me but you guys said you wouldn't yeah and they're like well, okay so okay. now he's out it's like hey you lied that's so funny that in a court of law with those types of go. games yeah. like and, and that's why people like you shows said no givebacks <laughs> you're like well your honor yeah <laughs> unfortunately by the rules of it's, that we made up yeah it's like when you're playing manhunt and it's like everybody wasn't clear on the rules before playing yeah when you just run out there it's like no 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 you said that if you're at the base you can't be taken back again it's like okay it's so you're exactly free. like that it's exactly <laughs> the the cosby situation could be compared to the the rules of manhunt plan like manhunt some kids would show up wearing all camo or all black and everything and some idiot on your team you just had like the girl that was just there to like giving over the pants hand job oh she was she was the best. she was she was wearing pink but like could easily be spotted in the fucking bushes you were hiding in yeah 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 one of those kind of things um but i, I think going back to the cosby thing the statute of limitations laws have been ruining this country um yeah i don't know if you're you know in the same boat on that but between that and child labor laws i think they need to be really <laughs> yeah you want you want to get rid of them i want to get rid of them yeah because then if we did that we wouldn't have to uh farm out making iphones to china anymore i think there's kids with some very durable fingers in this country yeah that's true yeah that's um, true yeah and the only place you can really get those anymore is at the shore on the boardwalk uh at some of those ice cream shops you know the yeah, place is the I, core, is it Coors bros Coors bros i used to work at dairy queen on that's, the wildwood boardwalk that's you know right it, Fuck yeah, you slinging ice cream. Cones, you would flip man. those fucking things upside down to show the oh, people, dude. I could fucking blizzard your hair off, dude. <laughs> I would fucking blizzard you right out of your ass on that boardwalk, <laughs> yeah, dude. I'll fucking. Did you ever spit in an ice cream cone if it was like a French Canadian? I, I thought about it because they were <laughs> the worst customers, and yeah. you know how how you know we've talked about the French Canadians on there, but they come up with such an attitude. And they go, well, I get, get, what's the, you know, yeah, like a fucking. They were asking for like cigarette flavored ice cream. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I didn't I didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. like the attitude they were bringing to the Wildwood Boardwalk. Yeah, yeah every the, every to, to the prestigious Wildwood Boardwalk. Yeah, and if they ask for a double scoop, one of those scoops just happened to be a little dip of the balls in that ice cream cone. Yeah, so be it. Yeah, that's how you got to roll sometimes. So be it. Yeah. But yeah, I go in the back in the in the freezer. They had toppings galore. You yeah. Know, they had uh, the peanut butter cups, the sprinkles, and you just wanted to fucking die in those. So you wanted to throw them up and just make it rain with toppings. Dude. It was <laughs> for a diabetic. It was not a great place to work. Yeah. Oh my God, you know when when you wanted to ball out a little bit, it was tempting. Oh, fuck yeah it definitely could be if if you got a, a bowl of chopped up reese's peanut butter cups in front of you it it's like torture you have to eat them yeah yeah i could see like somebody that has a drinking problem working as a bartender yeah. it's got to be a fucking problem exactly yeah yeah um oh let's let's end on this here for uh halloween's coming up yeah you and sam doing a joint costume with old jackson or what so i refuse to do the family uh <laughs> joint costume myself and sam tried to get me in on this and i go dude i am not yeah i'm not doing it i'm yeah. not being the dad who's dressed up like fucking um uh mr incredible in tights like i'm not <laughs> I'm not being the dad. It's cute with the mom and the baby. Yeah. The dad doing it is weird in yeah. my mind. You know what? I'm out on it. So, so I put my foot down on that. She tried to rope me in. What kind of cost? Was it that the kind of costume she was going for? Or was it something a little? So we're going to do Jack as Woody from Toy Story. Yeah. Graham is going to be Buzz Lightyear. Fuck. Be fucking adorable. Fuck. And I don't know if Sam's getting in on it. Uh, she's probably not because I don't know what, what character she would be. She could be the...
Yeah, I, I've, I might have been in there a little bit. I might have peeked in as an eight-year-old. Sure. So they have that section of Spirit Halloween, but it's nothing but just fucked up costumes. That's, oh, what, that's okay. what I think they should do. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I think they should do that. Um, the, for, the forbidden section. Yeah, the forbidden section. Yeah. I actually did, uh, we dressed as um, uh, Jared from Subway. Yikes. Um, we had an, we well, purposely had an offensive Halloween costume party when I lived in South Philly. Oh, that's good. That's good time. So. Every we asked everybody like dress fucked up, but like we're all gonna put our phones like I was living with other people, sure. Um, like we had roommates and their friends who I didn't know, so like there was people there that didn't know each other. So we're like, let's just let's do this. It'll be funny. It'll be weird. Something different. Yeah. But everybody, put your phones fucking away. There's no phones out. Like no one take yeah. any pictures. We don't need someone getting fired from yeah. their fucking accounts payable yeah. job. Just in case you run for office someday. Hey, no, yeah. no pictures, no photos. Yeah. Now I do. I still do have photos of Rachel and I. Uh, I would. I was. I had a subway t-shirt with the glasses and i was wearing really big jeans that didn't fit me <laughs> and then rachel was wearing onesie pajamas and i put a leash on her and yes. we were just walking around i mean and people were like oh the subway that the, it, 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 it made sense um my one buddy showed up that was the year remember the year that there was a um a kid that got eaten by an alligator at disney world oh my gosh the grand floridian yeah remember they they were just walking with their kid at like nighttime around the edge of the water and this alligator just came out and oh. fucking took this kid so i was like such a fucked up situation but like also idiot parents like what the fuck are you doing um but my buddy showed up wearing an alligator costume with a disney t-shirt over top of it that was like torn up and shit oh my like, goodness those and it happened like a week prior so like really timely topical shit like yeah. that hits so fucking hard in the halloween costume and he works for fox news yeah yeah he's actually a commentator on uh um, fox news does a little of the fox news fox sports his name's mike jarek actually is on fox 29 oh i've heard of him yeah, yeah. good guy <laughs> he is a good guy him good and guy. bob kelly i would watch wrestle in a grease pit um as well. really <laughs> yeah you ever see anybody sue serio did you see that big broad on there <laughs> fuck dude she looks like big bird and i would fucking pay a lot of money to see her roll around in a can of butter yeah. she is your type she sure. is yeah there's no hot weather people in philly anymore it's a Sheena Parveen left, and that's when things really went fucking yeah. downhill. Yeah. yeah. And I think there was a, f a news commentator in Philly that was banging a Flyers player. Oh, nice. And then they traded. That the was Mike Jarrett. Yeah, that was Mike Jarek. I, I, I fucking better not be Alex Holly. That woman is a fucking goddess. You ever oh, see her? She is very attractive. Between her and Mike Jarek just on TV. I mean, what a fucking. I used combat. to have a crush on Alex Holly. Really? Yeah. Fuck. At what point? Like a couple well, of weeks ago, yeah, a couple of years? I don't know. Whenever I was, you know, catching the news back in the day. I mean, <laughs> I guess she's been on the air for a while. Yeah. But when I was a single man. <laughs> um i'm sure and then you know i had to tell her listen alex i am spoken for yeah and yep. she was like i don't know who you are but yeah <laughs> yeah well you never it's know what gonna, it is yeah you got to take those risks and get into some twitter dms yeah yeah what can yeah. you do black don't crack we uh um i think we're <laughs> I think we're solid. We're at a, yeah, I'm solid right now thinking about Alex Holly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So what else you got uh, cooking coming up here? Uh, let me see. I will. I do have a couple shows coming up next week. I know I am hosting at Helium for the weekend for great Ted Alexandro. So I'll be there Thursday through Saturday. Mm. Um, so it should be at least five shows, I believe. So check out one of those. That should be fun. Nice. We got... Um, we got a show together too in Delco in November. Oh, okay. I, that week I have I think four shows in a week of November. Oh hell yeah! That Sunday with just Todd. Oh, that's right. We're out in uh, at Gatsby's Bar in Aston, I believe. Okay, that's you got a, that. That'd that's be a, fun. That's a Sunday show. I got. Uh, I'll be at New York Comedy Club Stamford November eighth. Ooh. Out in Connecticut for the first time. Well, Stamford. And then we got the boys. The boys are um, doing their helium post game show Fuck, November eleventh, right. which uh, we want to sell that bitch out. It should be fun. So get your ticks. Hell to yeah! That. I'm coming back from a trip that Saturday, so I hope I'm back in time to pop on over there. Well, it's during the. It's a four p.m. Oh, show. it's a four. That's it's right. Holy early, shit. early bird special. So you can come to the show, have fun, and still go out after and get fucked up. Which we will be doing. We'll be causing a ruckus. We might get the cops called on us after. Yeah, you bet your ass. Fuck. Well, so. if, I'm gonna I'm gonna be out there after that as well. Then yeah, yeah. that November I think uh, I'll be doing that show in Aston. Then we have fucking. Uh, 
nightcap on that Thursday, oh, and yeah. then that Saturday, I'm with like Jimbo Slice and uh, Mike Person somewhere. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we got a moose show back in crack in action. Nice. Uh, working on some others, we got some shit cooking, and uh, yeah, it'll be <laughs> a gay old time for us all. So come on out, touch some tits over the bra. Um, a gay old time. A gay old time. <laughs> Damn with the melody. 